Hello, Star Wars Galaxy of Hero players. This is Andy Teixeira. Today, I am covering the road ahead. So yesterday, we had the update of uh, the Palpatine Vader rework and the uh, release of Sith Marauder. Today, we have now the road ahead. And there's some exciting news, super exciting news. And this is also leading to a bunch of speculation as well. So let's go ahead and get into it. So... The Galaxy of Heroes, road ahead. As we embark in a new year, it's time to first talk again about some changes planned for the near uh, team future of Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. And on the and this is what it, it is. Boom. Does anyone recognize that? Of course, if you read the title, it kind of gives it away, but that is the uh, Treus Academy, I believe it's called. It's part of the Sith Triumvirate. We're uh, from Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic to Sith Lords. We are getting a raid where we'll be facing Darth Sion, Darth Nihilus, Darth Treya. All coming to the game, you know. So we're going to at least be facing Sion and Treya. Now, are we at the end of the month getting Treya and Sion so we can get to play with them as well? Oh man, I hope so. I do hope so that's the case. So we will definitely for sure see... Um, so, so there's a lot to go on, uh, cause usually raids come with a ra raid reward. Uh, it's usually a character other than gear and stuff like that. So I'm assuming this next raid will give us a good amount of credits. Hopefully it gives us some guild event currency or a good amount of at least guild currency. Um, another thing is I hope that it gives us, it should give us gear 12 gear. Most likely it's going to start doing that, which is going to be nice. Um, but hopefully the heroic, unless they have two different versions of heroic, I I would hate to I hate, hate to see that. I feel like one heroic, two characters, maybe one character. We'll see. There's some speculation now that it's going to be Revan that's going to be the unlock character. Um, that's a possibility. My assumption will just be that they will add both Darth Treya and Darth Sion uh, to the characters to unlock. But of course. And of course, my assumption would also be that Darth Sion becomes part becomes the tank we are needing for Dark Side, akin to General Kenobi, because General Kenobi is the light side. Now this one's the dark side, so we'll see. We'll see how that one works out. Um, but yeah, we're, we're getting that. That's exciting news. Now my assumption for how it's going to work is that usually raids are for four tiers unless they do a fifth tier for any reason um the first tier is going to be against a bunch of different sith troopers sith assassins sith marauders they might do you know the sith type character you know the sith characters we're getting uh in the game of course the only thing is i would see a reskin of sith trooper because at this time the sith trooper would look like the sith troopers from kotor 1 and 2 so, unless we get a reskin or a new version of a Sith Trooper that way, hey, that works. Uh, Sith Trooper and in parentheses, private, I don't know. And then a, a sergeant or something like that. But a, a tier of, you know, where we face, <clears throat> face Sith Troopers, Sith Assassins, Sith Marauders, maybe Sith Juggernauts and Sith Sorcerer. So, we get a, a, a Trooper, Assassin, a Marauder, a Juggernaut, and a Sorcerer. That's if we get those, you know, those other two options. I don't see why we couldn't, because we they kind of did have a, a juggernaut in the game. If you built in KOTOR 1 and 2, you could build essentially a juggernaut. It was a Sith warrior, and then they had the Sith Lord. But it, I, I feel like going towards uh, SWOTOR, Star Wars Galaxy, or, or Star Wars The Old Republic, where they had a juggernaut, they had, um, let's see, what was the other, uh, the Sith Sorcerer. So they have a cleansing healer. That'd be great. Um, I just don't know who the main character would be in that instance. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, that first, you know, boss. Maybe the boss would be the juggernaut. And then everyone around him supports him in some way. Uh, maybe the juggernaut. And if we do get the juggernaut as a playable character, there's no leadership. But there's some sort of leadership for the raid. Obviously, it's a different character. It's a different build. A slightly different kit. So, and the second tier, I'd assume easily it's going to be facing Darth Sion. He is for sure a very viable, 
or he's the very first character you run uh, face against and or meet in Star Wars uh, Knights of the Old Republic 2, the Sith Lords. He's the first Sith kind of Sith you meet outside of the fact you do eventually find out Kray is Treya. Uh, but anyways, so yeah, Darth. Um, so yeah, we get Darth Sion first. Uh, the second one we would face Darth Nihilus. Okay, unless it's Darth Nihilus uh, second, because you, even though you meet Sion first, you don't kill him until before uh, Treya. So it could be we face Nihilus, and then we be, face Sion, and then we face Treya, and you know, in sequential um, tiers, uh, tier order. So it'd be a bunch of Sith troopers and stuff, and then Sion with assassins, Nihilus with troopers and juggernauts. <laughs> And then Treya, maybe Treya's by herself, and she's wielding the triple purple lightsaber with another lightsaber, like a red lightsaber in one hand, and a triple purple lightsaber. That would be insane. That would be insane. Unless, unless there's another possibility, we face Nihilus with troopers and stuff, Scion, troopers and stuff, Treya with one lightsaber with troopers and stuff, and then Treya by herself with three purple floating lightsabers. That could be another thing too. There's a lot of speculation. So let me know in the guy. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. What you speculate, the, uh, you know the how the tears are gonna work. I I feel like that my the last the latter of what I just said might be a, the very possibility. Just so they have a viable boss in each of the tears. Nihilus, Scion, Treya, Treya, and Treya. You know has two forms. Makes sense. So you know. Uh, Here's to hoping, of course. Um, now we also get some more info and news. Quality of life improvements. We're getting, so we're getting a, a sneak peek at some of the quality of life improvements. A lot of people have been asking for. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping this year, it's not in this uh, list. Bronze impacts are fixed. There's a lot, a big one that everyone's, you know, asking. So they'll probably just do a simple, okay, here's a 4, 8, and 12. Enjoy. You know, a 4, 8, 12 of opening, which I'd be game with that. That'd be just straight up, boom, done. Or 5, 10, and 15. That might be even better. Or 5, 10, 15, 20? I don't know. That'd, be, that'd just be getting that row a little too much. Maybe throwing the bronzeums in resources. Because they're always, uh, always being used. I don't know. Anyway, so going back to this. Um, so, let's see. They're going to be fixing raid tickets display. Uh, in January, we rolled out a partial fix that will be following by a full fix to guilds uh, that will serve as a time saver for officers and leaders in managing player activities. That's a big thing. That's a big improvement that's going to help the game going forward. And then they can just sit there and message. Um, it doesn't say anything also about messaging, but they'll, you know, your guild leader officer will message you, say, hey, you were short. You know, take this penalty or something. I don't know. We'll, we'll see exactly what that's going to be. I'm assuming a lot of these quality of life uh, improvements are also going to be covered during the event uh, of, you know, everyone going to all the, a lot of the YouTubers like Mobile Gamer, Arnold T, Warrior, they're going to EA, you know, they're going to show them off. And I hope that we get a good look at that. I feel like, and I know they kind of did that last year as well as they did that with um, the release of Thrawn. We got to see how Thrawn worked. We got to see, you know, quality of life last year. Some of the quality of life added. So I'm excited. I'm excited for quality of life. Um, additional simming. So there's a few different places. So they're going to add Galactic War as a simming option to save people time. And I kind of agree with that. Like, like even though I, I actually personally like having fun with uh, simming or not, not simming uh, Galactic War. Um, even though it says here that, but we don't want to take away the experience since it's a place for people to experiment with their team makeup. After beating it at a few certain times, the entire Galactic War will be symbol for full rewards. That's awesome. So you can just get the rewards like that. It will be done. I don't know. Like I'll probably still play it depending on the day. If I'm super busy, I'm just going to sim it. Um, but if it's not, and I hope this is kind of given to players at least that reach between 50 to 75 instead of going straight to 85 and have at least beaten it a few times because, or just, to, or just maybe just, they do it to beat it a few times. So you beat it 10, maybe 15 times. You unlock the ability to sim the game, <clears throat> the, uh, 
the Galactic War, so you don't have to worry about that. I would be game with that. Um, just because, like I said, you know, a lot of play people have busy lives at times. They, they have such a super busy day, they don't have time to hit that Galactic War. If you've beaten it so many times, all you have to do is boom, sim it, boom, you're done. Voila. Unless, it, you know, and if you can't beat it until a certain level, maybe, you know, 75 and up, you eventually get a, the chance to sim it if you've been having troubles beating it for some reason. I know that I had that trouble, but once I got a good couple of team makeups, Nihilus team, then finally Phoenix team, and then they did the rework of this simming of it, or I mean the rework of Galactic War, so. But that's good. Uh, Multi-simming will also be brought to ship challenges. Like, we had a multi-simming thing for um, the regular challenges, so being able to do that for ship challenge, oh, that's going to be brilliant, especially on the day they have multiple. Instead of going in individually, they're going to do that. So I'm glad they're doing that as well. I just hope they kind of work the re reworked rewards of all the challenges a little bit. They, I feel like they could be a little better. Like farming car Carbontes, I hate getting three or four. I would like to see like a five to eight or a seven to ten chance of getting just to speed up Carbontes because Carbontes are just used on almost every character. Maybe even adding some other farmable uh, gear at the like the la last one, like the last tier, like being able to get like uh, hollow the Mark III hollow projectors. Those are needed a bunch. There's a couple of blue pieces of gear that could be needed uh, that you need like 40 just to un you know unlock this one piece. So hopefully they do a little rework with that. But but for the most part, simming the ship challenges. I'm glad with that. The credits to heist and droid events will now be simmable. I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Just, you know, I feel like it would be better than just, you know, burning through that. It would save some time, uh, especially when it comes around. I'm, I'm busy at work. I just sit there, pop the sim, pop the sim, done. Ooh, done and done. Um, I just hope, I feel like another thing they could do is rework some of the the rewards on that but for the most part i'm glad they're reworking those uh, pre-battle text search on the squad select screen players will now be able to bring up a filter that searches for any character name or tag that's awesome i i'm glad they're doing that so to, so i want to find uh, you know work on a first order team uh, so i can build a team boom done and done i just hope that they also give us a chance to uh, have an actual page where you select the character creation screen on the main screen. Like we have a left side or the right side where we have the events, the uh, guild events, the regular events. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because um, raids are on the bottom, so we don't have to worry about raids. Um, let's see, what's the other? Uh, the double X EXP. But down there at the bottom, there could be a spot just specifically only for... Uh, for you know team building just team building fitting it somewhere on the main screen would be brilliant even if it's up there next to the settings you know team building select it go in you don't have to wait for a battle you know to be able to be battle ready to go do that so they might be doing that but this isn't the full you know release um they've also worked on some territory wars changes like they're fixing ter uh tiebreakers um i'll let you read that uh just making it just easier so that they break ties instead of Always having a tie. Increasing defensive squads for top guilds. Um, as top guilds have so many squads, the average of four defensive squads per players and allowing them to fully demonstrate the strength of their rosters is not challenging them and can lead to ties. So they increase the number of defensive squads required per person at the top tier of play. So that's good. It allows us to you know work on that. There'll be more fixed improvements coming. Um, and also, I forgot to read, uh, for the for those who are wondering how the defensive fared, you also eventually, after the battle, the war territory war is over, you get to see how your defensive squads did. Did they de defeat a team or two? Did they get completely destroyed? Um, so yeah, that is that. Sorry about the mid-video pause. Eventually, I'll be having videos where I can cut that kind of stuff out, <laughs> fix stuff. But anyway, so going on, Wicket, Night Sisters, and character release cadence. So we recently made a following character shards available in shipments. 
Going forward, you will see them in more traditional farmable areas. These characters will also continue to appear as rewards in their respective reoccurring events. Wicked, Talzin, Zombie, and Spirit. That's good. I've been wanting to work on those. Excuse me. Uh, especially Wicked, so I can at least have a good uh, Ewok, to, you know, level 85, gear 8 or 9 uh, Ewok team just for Territory Wars. Because I don't like using Ewoks as much maybe but but i also want to see how well they do in uh, ter uh galactic wars as well after listening to the uh, feedback and collecting player data it's clear that our efforts to make the distribution of these faction defining characters special by having them farm exclusive behind recurring events has caused confusion on how marquee event characters are released and the future will be working harder to preserve the integrity of the character release cadence by ensuring that characters released via marquee events cycle through the game in more a standard fashion with within clearly defined periods of time characters released via territory battles legendary events etc will continue to have more of a unique and challenging farming schedule thanks for helping us and then of course they you know thank us for helping kick it off another year and as always see you at the hollow tables i'm you know i'm glad they're going to be working on that because like like wicket and and the Tales and Zombie Spirits, they could have easily been in different areas. I feel like, honestly, I know this sounds weird. I feel like Talzin and Wicket should have been legendary events. Like, you need Ewoks to unlock Wicket, uh, because Wicket is a more defining character, as a, a more unique character, and he would fit perfectly. Granted, yes, and I feel like, just, you know, just knock it out. Set it up, reset up the characters. Um, of course, these two uh these two characters would actually be a little different on the unlock because if you already have them at three star, four star, etc., they won't unlock at five stars. So maybe, you know, these would be two legendary events that'll be a little easier uh, where they can kind of make them kind of similar to Yoda's legendary event. But just having them as legendary characters, I feel like that would have been the best way to re represent these uh, two characters. Of course, back in the day, it was just Mother Talzin I was thinking of, but Wicked, now that I think about it, Wicked would have been great as a legendary character. All they have to do is give him another unique, and he is set for the races. Uh, and that would probably even, you know, maybe a unique that also helps other Ewok allies. Kind of a R2 for Ewoks, you know, R2 number crunch, but for Ewoks. So yeah, that is the uh, big update. Sorry it was a little lengthy, especially since I kind of rambled a little bit. But, you know, if you made it all the way through the end, I'm, you know, I'm glad you guys watched the video. I'm grateful that you guys have been watching videos. And it's always fun, you know, making these videos and predicting and getting the what-if scenarios. So, but yeah, that is uh, the road ahead. I'm excited. I can't wait. Uh, I'm still pushing and hoping for um, Sith Juggernaut and Sith Sorcerer for next week. I think that would be a brilliant time to release those. And then... You know, we fall into the events of, you know, the, the raid, maybe the big Sith that's supposed to come out. I kind of still want to predict Darth Sion, or Darth uh, Bane as a legendary event character we could get, but we most likely will be getting a uh, Scion and Darth Treya as rewards for the event. So we'll see how well they do. But I feel like Darth Bane would be great. He could be a counter lead, uh, a, a counter lead for Sith, you know, he he can have counter on his own if he's not the leader. He's, you know, he has a synergy of the rule of two. Another thing I will say is Treya, at least on if they eventually add Treya to the uh, roster for us to play with. I hope she's kind of built similarly to what I was suggesting, where he, she shares his uh, linkage to another character another uh maybe maybe stick it just force users or maybe just stick it to um you know dark side non-droids that would be that'd be great but you know we'll, we'll see what they do um definitely we'll i'll keep you guys updated and in the meantime so but again thanks for watching and you guys have a wonderful day